So I'll be discussing the uh, what, the when, the how, the where, the why, and the who of the rapture. Amen. Amen. You know, whenever I study the Bible, I've always been this way. I have a lot of questions. And I like to find out the what, the when, the how, yeah. <laughs> the where, the why, and the who of something. Amen. Amen. That's how I study. Amen. Amen. And so I thought you might want to know the what, the when, the how, the where, the why, and the who of the rapture. The rapture is the next great event on God's prophetic calendar. I think that's why I need to talk about it. Now, I've come to the uh, understanding by listening to different pastors and, and uh, teachers on television that there's a lot of pastors don't talk about end-time events. They will not touch that. And it's amazing to me how many will not fool with it. And so I believe it's our responsibility as pastors to talk about end-time events because really uh, prophecy is a huge part of the Bible. I don't remember the percentage, but a large percentage of the Bible is prophecy. And it's prophecy that's already been fulfilled, but there's a lot of it that hadn't been fulfilled yet. And uh, rapture is one of those things that has not happened yet, and so we need to talk about that. Soon, believers all over the world will disappear. Some of them are your friends and your neighbors. Many are policemen, truck drivers, firemen, teachers, people from every nation, and every culture. Cars will leave the road because the driver is not there anymore. Airplanes will make emergency landings because the pilot has disappeared. Commerce will come to a complete halt because so many laborers are missing. You know, when I was thinking along those lines, I could just see you know, the foreman on a construction company say, I wonder where Bob went. He should be back by now. <laughs> yeah. He better watch it. He's going to get fired. <laughs> huh? Going to be a lot of workers missing. Amen? Wonder where so-and-so went. He's not back yet. Every prison, think about this, every prison will be on lockdown because many of the inmates can't be accounted for. <laughs> they keep counting and they said, no, that's not everybody. Let's count them again. That's still not everybody. Unsaved loved ones will return home to find it empty. Think about it. Every little baby in every hospital will disappear. Society will be in absolute chaos. Every emergency personnel left will be assisting those that have been left behind. The big question will be this. What happened? What happened? Is it a terrorist strike? Perhaps an alien invasion. Do you realize that's what they're preparing us to believe now? Do you see how much they're talking about aliens on TV, on the History Channel, in different ones? Do you realize there are people today that claim to contact aliens? They claim to be able to hear them and even to talk to them. And they even have training now to where you can go to them and they'll teach you how to do it. Yeah. I was listening to one guy on YouTube one day and I mean... He just sounded like some smart person, but thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because after a while, I said, oh, something's up with this dude. Because he wasn't jiving with the Bible, <laughs> you know. And he turned out to be one of those, contacting aliens. Now, you know what these aliens are? They're demonic beings. That's actually what they are. 
Yeah, they're aliens out there, all, all right, but they're demonic beings. Those fast-moving things, you know, that, that, that they see that, that, that seem to divide, defy gravity and, and everything else, that is demonic beings that's doing all that because they're going from one realm into another. They can go from the spirit realm into the natural realm and then go back in. That's how they can do all that stuff that they're doing. And so they're getting our minds ready to receive this thing about aliens so when the rapture happens, they'll say, oh, that's what happened. The aliens took them away. And then they'll have their reasons, you know, why, probably why they took them. And, but that's what happened. And you're going to see from this day forward even more and more talk on television about it. I mean, they, they've uncovered a lot of things they had hidden in Washington. They opened the files on a lot of it. They're making it wide open now. And that's why. Many will be left behind. It's going to be the top story for months on every major network. I'm talking about the rapture. When you tune in to CBS or whoever tunes in, to CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, CNBC, and Fox News, they will be talking about the rapture. They'll be talking about this event, the disappearance of all of these people, and eventually some of them will notice, isn't it interesting? They're all Christians. They all claim to be Christians. Hmm. And then there'll be this, this sociologist or psychologist gets on TV. Well, let me tell you what happened. Then they'll have an analyst that comes on there, you know, acts like he's real smart. Let me tell you what happened. Oh, that, they'll be full of them. Each one will have their own explanation, won't they? It'll be one of the worst days for America and the world, but one of the best days for believers. Because the only explanation that fits this scenario is the catching away of God's people as predicted in the Bible. It's predicted in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 through 18, quote, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. In other words, those who have died. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So there's comfort in this. That's if, if you're ready. Amen. You don't have to be afraid. There's comfort in these words. Since somebody says, well, the word rapture, you know, it's not in the Bible. You know, how can y'all believe in, in, in rapture, you know, when it ain't even in the Bible? Well, let me tell you something else. The word Bible is not in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. But we still use it. Amen. Amen. To help our understanding. No, the concept of the rapture is expressed by the word caught up. Amen. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, the Greek word here is harpazo, H-A-R-P-A-Z-O, and it means to be caught up or snatched away. Now, the word rapture comes from the Latin word R-A-P-A-R-E, which means to take away or to snatch out. We're just using the, rap, the Latin word to explain it. But you can use the word caught up if you want to. Taken away. Snatched away. You know, you can use any word that you want to. They all mean the same thing. Now, the what of the rapture 
is the catching away of all Christians upon the earth. Question, how can we be certain that this will really happen? Because there's a lot of Christians that don't believe in the rapture. Some put it at, at, at different places in God's plan. Some put it at the middle of the tribulation period. Some put it at the end. But there's some that they don't believe in it at all. Some believe that the second coming and the rapture are the same thing. There's all diff different kind of beliefs about it. And as I said, some don't believe it in it at all. But how can we be sure that Jesus will catch the church away because he promised it? Amen? Amen. Amen. Our Lord, our King, our Creator, our Savior promised it. You know, it'd be good enough if we had only the promise of the apostles. It'd be good enough if we just had the, the promise of uh, what the angels said in the Bible. Remember, the angels uh, watched Jesus. He ascended back into heaven on Mount Olivet. They said, the same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. What do we sing about? I believe he's coming back. Just like he said, amen. amen. See, that's good, but we have the promise of Jesus himself. In John 14, Jesus told the disciples at the Last Supper, he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Modern translations say many dwelling places or places of abode. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. That's what he did when he left here. About 2,000 years ago, he went home. He went to the Father's house to prepare a place for you and me. Got to be a nice place because he's been working on it for 2,000 years. Ain't going to be no shack. That's it. Ain't going to be no shanty. Ain't going to be no lean-to. It's going to be a nice place to dwell. Amen? It's going to be whatever you like. If you like a log cabin, well, then that's what it's going to be. Amen? If you like a mansion, then I'm sure that's what it's going to be. Whatever you like. Because he will give you the desires of your heart. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again. Amen. Did you hear? I will come again. That's, that's red letter. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, red letter. <laughs> I will come again. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, angels. But Jesus said it. Amen. I will come again, and then I will receive you unto myself. Amen. That's what he said. So that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's, that's the what of the rapture. It's the catching up of the saints unto himself. Amen. He catches up. The groom catches up the bride if you want to say it like that. Then there's the how of the rapture. How will it happen? I want to know how it will happen. Well, Jesus appears in the clouds. He appears up in the air. First Thessalonians 4, 17, For the Lord himself, somebody say himself, himself. will descend from heaven. So he, he's got to descend from heaven because heaven's farther than earth. I didn't have to say that, but <laughs> that's why he's got to descend. Amen. It's a lot further. Amen. Amen. The Bible says it's in the sides of the north, wherever that is. Amen. But he will not set his feet on the ground at the rapture. The second coming, he will set his feet on the ground, but not in the rapture. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, the second coming, as we talked about last week, is at the end of the tribulation period. The rapture is at the beginning. 
before the tribulation period and to contra contrast the difference between the rapture and the second coming, I want to share these things with you. First of all, in the rapture, Jesus comes as a thief. Many people will be unaware. They'll be caught off guard. But in the second coming, the scripture says, every eye shall see him. In the rapture, Jesus comes for his saints, but in the second coming, he comes with his saints. Amen. Amen. He'll come back riding a white horse, and we'll be behind him riding on white horses. Amen. Amen. So if you've never rode a horse before, get ready. You'll have a crash course. Amen. All I can tell you is hang on. <laughs> Amen. And learn how to say, whoa, whoa, giddy up. In the rapture, he comes in the clouds or up in the air, but in the second coming, he sets his feet on the earth. In a rapture, he comes with joy and peace, but in the second coming, he comes with wrath and judgment. It's actually while the battle of Armageddon is going on and all of the nations are gathered together against Israel to destroy them. And the scripture says he will destroy them when he opens his mouth. A sharp sword comes out of his mouth and he obliterates his enemies. And that includes the Antichrist and the false prophet. Amen. 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 And we won't have to lift a finger, praise God. We'll just sit there and look at our champion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, now, now this is what I love. Jesus could do it any way he wants. He could send anybody he wants, but he's not going to do that. He's not going to send an angel to come get us. He's not going to send a prophet to come get us, but he's coming himself. Amen. I love that. Hallelujah. That lets me know, oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves you and me. Amen. 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 He's coming himself. Amen. Oh, I love that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank he came the first time himself, didn't he? Yes. When he came to Bethlehem. Amen. And he is appearing the next time himself for the church. Amen. Now, there are three things that are going to happen to start this event we call the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, I want you to notice this. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven, notice, with a shout. Amen? With the voice of an archangel, two. With the trumpet of God, three. Amen? So first, let's look at the shout. This word means a command. A command or an order or a call for preparation for action. Jesus gives the shout of command for the dead to arise and those that are alive to be transformed and then called up unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the same voice that commanded the winds and waves to cease and be still. This is the same voice that commanded the sick to be healed, the demon possessed to be set free. This is the same voice that said, I am to the guards that came to arrest him and they all fell back to the ground. Just like he commanded Lazarus who was dead to come to life, he will give the command for all believers that have died to come forth and millions of graves will burst open to release their bodies and those that are alive will be transformed as they stand on their feet. Question, what will the command be, you reckon? Well, perhaps redeemed of the Lord, come forth. Because when he called for Lazarus, he said his name. And then he said, come forth. Amen? The second thing is, with the voice of an archangel. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17b. Now, this scripture has been interpreted different ways by different people. Some say that Christ's voice will resemble the voice of an archangel. 
Others say that an archangel rather will accompany Jesus. We do know that angels have always been used to carry important messages to man. Gabriel was sent to Zacharias concerning the birth of John the Baptist, wasn't he? He was also sent to Mary concerning the birth of Christ. An angel was sent to Joseph in a dream, which could have been Gabriel. We see in Revelation that the tribulation judgments are all carried out by angels. The primary purpose of angels are, number one, they were created to praise and worship God. Number two, they make announcements. Number three, they protect Israel. Amen. Number four, they protect God's people. You got one that follows you around, at least one. Amen. Dispensing the judgments of God is another purpose of the angels. We see that especially in the book of Revelation. Some say that Michael may be the accompanying angel at the rapture since he is the only archangel mentioned in Scripture. Could be. We don't know for sure. Now, the third thing that will happen is this, with the trumpet of God. Somebody say trumpet. This word trumpet can also be translated shofar which means ram's horn. Through Israel's history, shofars as well as trumpets have been made or used to make announcements. They were also used for a summons to war to mark the commencement of an attack and also to proclaim a military victory. They were also used to call public attention to other events such as claims to kingship, oath takings, celebrations, and rejoicings. In the book of Revelation, angels blew trumpets, many of them, announcing the judgments of God. Paul mentions the rapture announcement in 1 Corinthians 15, 52b, quote, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now, Paul gives more details in this chapter 15. In verse 51, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And this word sleep here means to die. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible is put on incorruption, this mortal is put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass this saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, hail or Hades, where is your victory? In chapter 51, Paul reveals that those that have died will be raised first to receive their new bodies. Now somebody said, why do the, does the dead have to be the first ones to rise? And I always say, because they have six foot further to go. But that's just a joke. <laughs> but they will rise first. You see, they are already in heaven. Hear me. They are already in heaven, but they are in their spiritual bodies. You have a spiritual body and you have a physical body. When you die, your physical body goes into the ground and then your spiritual body goes to be with Jesus. But on the rapture or the resurrection day, which is also called, those that have died, they will come from heaven with Jesus and be reunited with their bodies. And they will receive a resurrection body. 
They'll receive a body like they had when alive on the earth, but without any weaknesses and any imperfection. And a good example is Jesus' body. You remember when Jesus was resurrected? See, he was in the heart of the earth three days and three nights, but when he came back, what was the first thing he did? He re-entered his body. And then there was a resurrection that took place and he was a different, I mean, he was the same, you could look at him, he was the same looking person and everything, but it was a resurrection body then. That human body had become an immortal resurrection body. He didn't have to use the doorknob after then, he just walked right through the door. And we'll be able to do the same things. We'll be able just to think where we want to be and we'll be there at the speed of thought. Because we have moved dimensions. We have moved from the earthly dimension to the spiritual dimension. Amen. And that's what we have to look forward to. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. But see, those that have died, they will get their new bodies first when they rise up. But then we will receive our resurrection bodies. In verse 51... Paul reveals that many believers will be alive at that event. They have not died. Perhaps that will be us. Amen? If the, if the rapture is, uh, is soon or right around the corner, that could be us. We will receive resurrection immortal bodies, not subject to death. That's what immortal means. Now, we will receive our new bodies before being called up. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Listen to this one very, very carefully. It tells you actually how it will happen. We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall be changed. Somebody say changed. So all of a sudden, if you hear that uh, voice, that command, and then the trumpet and then all of a sudden, something's going to start happening to your body. A change will start to take place. That's after the, the, uh, those that have died are raised up. They receive their resurrection bodies. But all this is going to happen real fast, and I'm getting to that. But look at the word change. It means transformed. It's from the Greek word A-L-L-A-S-S-O, transformed. It's, it's kind of the same as the word metamorphosis. Remember the Hulk? Amen. And when somebody would make him angry, he would turn from Bill Bixby to the Hulk. <laughs> there was a change that took place, a metamorphosis. Amen. Thank God we won't be the Hulk and we won't be green. <laughs> but we will have brand new resurrection immortal bodies. New bodies because they are necessary for us to live in heaven. Just like now, if you want to live in space, you have to have a space suit. Amen? We have to have certain type of bodies to live in heaven. Only our new bodies will be able to withstand the fullness of God's glory. Amen? Sometimes when we just get a taste of his glory down here, the body can't handle it, and it falls out. That's why some people fall under the power, amen, because this physical body just can't handle it. They're overwhelmed by it. Well, it's going to be millions of times stronger in heaven, amen. If we don't have a new body, we'd be fried like a piece of bacon, amen. But we have to have that immortal resurrection body. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit, the, the imperishable inherit the perishable. I think I got that right. Our new bodies do have material properties, it's true, but it is of a kind that is suited for the spiritual, for the imperishable, for the eternal atmosphere of heaven. Just like Jesus, they could touch him. They could see him. And he told the disciples, look at me, touch me. I'm not a ghost. Yeah. This body's real. Amen. 
he even ate. He, on the Sea of Galilee, he, he fried up some fish for him, remember? And he ate that fish. I think that's so cool that Jesus likes fish. Because <laughs> me as a southern boy, I like me some fish. Amen. <laughs> And I'm so glad that tells me at the marriage of the supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb, they're going to be fish on the table. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Lord, just let there be some catfish. I know it's a bottom dweller, and it's not kosher, but uh, maybe he'll overlook that. Amen. <laughs> Woo, but he likes that fish. I like all kind of fish. Amen. I even like that kind they got at Captain D's, amen? That deep sea fish. Praise the Lord, but I like me some fish. But Jesus even ate, and thank God we'll be able to eat. Through eternity, we'll be able to eat. Now, I don't think we'll get hungry like we do now, and we'll have to have it to live, but we will be able to eat. Amen. amen. Brand new resurrection bodies. Now, here's another reason for this. This is the only part of our salvation package that has not been received yet. We've been redeemed spiritually, Amen. but we don't have our physical portion yet. We don't have our new bodies yet. Okay. That's what's going to happen at the rapture or the resurrection. Amen? Amen. It's going to fulfill our salvation package is the way I like to put it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I told you earlier that this change, this transformation is going to happen quick. I mean, we have to be slow to explain it, but what I just said is going to happen quick. Right. Amen. Yes. Undele. Eva. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking Speedy Gonzalez, quick. Amen? Eva, undele. L listen to how quick. Verse 52, B, in the twinkling. In the what? Somebody say twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, a little star. Twinkling of an eye, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, someone said this means one thousandth of a second. Now, that's fast. We can't think that fast. The Greek word is A-T-M-O-S, from which we get our word atom, meaning something that cannot be divided. Think about it. In the flash of one thousandth of a second, every living believer on earth will be transformed and disappeared. And you know what I think about? There will be no time to repent. If you're not ready, there will be no time to repent. You might, you might hear a command and hear that trumpet, and then when you say, Lord Jesus, please... Too late. And then them sorry preachers that were left behind will tell you, well, I know what happened. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo, but it's fast. Amen. It is fast, y'all. And so that's why we need to be ready. Amen. That, that's the how. The how of the rapture. It's supernatural. It is. You need, you, you, you need faith to, to get your mind around it. Amen. You can't try to figure it out with your, with your own intellect. It takes faith. Amen. Amen. Because it's a supernatural event. Amen. But God has done supernatural things in the past. Yes, Look at the birth of Jesus. Amen. Born of a virgin. <laughs> Amen. He's a supernatural God. And he does supernatural things. Amen. And the next one coming up is the rapture. Amen. 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 Are you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. We got to be ready. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so if you're not ready, 
you can, uh, you can pray something like this. If, you, if you're not sure, those of you listening by uh, television or YouTube, if we're airing this, if you're not sure that you're ready for rapture, you could pray something like this. Dear God in heaven, I come before you confessing my need of a Savior. Because of sin, I know that I'm separated from you. Forgive me for deliberately living my life without you. I believe that you sent Jesus to the cross so that I might be forgiven and saved from sin and eternal judgment. I do believe Jesus' blood is sufficient payment for my sin debt. I accept that. I believe that. And according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, I confess Jesus as my Lord. And I believe that he was raised from the dead and I accept and receive your forgiveness and eternal life now. Receive me into your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Make me ready to go with you when you call your people home. I don't want to be left behind. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me unto yourself. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And when you pray that or something like that, you can have the assurity in your heart that you are ready. You don't have to be fearful. You don't have to be concerned. But like Paul said, comfort one another Amen. with these words. If you're ready, you can be comfortable in your mind, in your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. But he is coming back just like he said. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. And Lord, we ask you, to help us to tell others that you're coming. Lord, help us to let our light shine. Lord, as we go about our daily uh, business and things in this world, because there are so many people that are lost, so many people that are in darkness, help us, Lord. Give us the, the wisdom and the boldness that we need to tell them about you so they don't have to be left behind. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise you, Lord.